Hi everybody, Gary Hydrick. Welcome to Fish in Chums. Well today we have a unique story. One of my all-time great best friends, Hank Bauer. A lot of you guys remember Hank, especially for baseball fans. He was just a tremendous baseball player and what a baseball personality. Well I got to know uh, Hank many years ago on a hunting trip and we fast become friends. We spent the next 35 years traveling, fishing, uh, just having a great, great time. And I heard so many baseball stories because Hanks played back in the 1950s when the New York Yankees were winning all those World Series titles. Yes, Hank was on that mighty Yankee team. Mickey Mantle, Billy Martin, Yogi Bear, Whitey Ford. I could just go on, all great champions. And I uh, sat in the boat many a day, listening to Hank and reminiscing the old days, talking about the New York Yankees. One day I said, Hank, I think I'm gonna write a story about your life. And he says, better wait till I die before you write that one. Because <laughs> he had a lot of wild stories and most of them are all of them were true. Here's a story that I pulled from the files that I know you're really going to enjoy. It's a world-class story. It was Billy Martin's birthday. And they're all in New York. They played a good afternoon game in Yankee Stadium. So the guys were going to take Billy Martin out for his birthday party. And they selected the world-famous Copacabana in New York City. It was a very famous nightclub and what an atmosphere. I'll take you and show you a little bit of it. Her name was Lola. She was a showgirl with yellow feathers in her hair and a dress cut down her ass. She would merengue and do the cha-cha. Who could ask for more at the Copa? So what do you think of that? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> that particular night, I believe, Sammy Davis Jr. was performing. All the guys had a big table. Many of them had their wives there. And there's a big gentleman that was at the next table in front of the Yankees. And evidently he had a little bit too much to drink. Because all of a sudden he looked back and he said, you Yankees aren't going to push anybody around here tonight. It kept giving the Yankees a hard time. Well, Whitey and Mickey and Billy and all those guys, they weren't out looking for trouble. They never were. They just wanted to be left alone. Well, the guy pretty soon turned back and looked at Hank Bauer and said, especially you, Hank, you're supposed to be a tough Marine. You're nothing to me. I'd take you on any time. Well, Hank started to get up and... I think uh, Mickey held him down and says, nah, don't even listen to him, he was ignoring So the night went on and he kept kept hammering my buddy Hank, kind of insulting him. So pretty soon the gentleman got up and went to the bathroom. Well, Billy got up and followed him and Mickey, and then Hank came in. And there was a little scuffle. Hank said he, he left, he didn't know exactly what happened. So uh, they never did see the guy after that. And so the next day, Hank was at his hotel room in New York City, getting ready for an afternoon game. Knock came on his hotel door and it was a bellboy. And he says, yeah, what do you need, Jimmy? And he said, well, Hank, what do you want me to do with all these reporters down in the lobby? And Hank said, well, what they got to do with me? Oh, they want to see you. Hank says, well, what for? He says, oh, you didn't see the headlines in the New York Times? Here, look at this. And here it was. He had made the headlines in all the New York City newspapers. Hank says, well, I got to get out of here. I don't want to go down to the lobby and, and see all those press people. And the kid says, well, let me sneak you down to the employee's elevator, and I'll, I'll get you out the back door. 
So uh, the bellboy got Hank out the back door, and Hank got a cab and went to Yankee Stadium. And there the reporters were, hundreds of them, he said. He picked out the, he was supposed to go take batting practice, and there were just reporters, everybody waiting, everywhere waiting for him. So finally, Hank had to go out and go do batting, batting practice. And he noticed the cameraman were coming up and taking pictures with his knuckles. And Hank said, what are you taking, what are you taking pictures of my knuckles for? And he said, well, you, you hand you. You clobbered that guy at the Copa last night. Hank said, I, I didn't there. Get lost. I didn't touch anybody. <laughs> well, pretty soon, here come Casey Stingle, the world-famous manager of the New York Yankees. Bauer and Mantle and Barron and, and uh, Martin, get your butt in my office. You're all in trouble. As I told you guys to keep out of trouble, now you're in trouble. So they all come trotting down to Casey's office and here come the general manager, the boss of the New York Yankees. And he said, I warned you guys. I warned you, Billy Martin. I warned you, Bauer. I warned you, Mickey. You're okay, Yogi. You don't get in much trouble. But you guys, I just warned you to stay out of trouble. And now you're in big trouble. In fact, Bauer, you got to go down and get fingerprinted to book a new at the, at the police station today. <laughs> Hank said, hey, I didn't do anything. I didn't touch anybody. And uh, it don't make any difference. He filed charges against you. So Hank thought, oh man, I'm in big, big trouble. I mean, I, I could really be uh, sued and I could really be in big, big trouble, not only by being sued but with the Yankees. And he said he was really worried. So he went down to get fingerprinted and mugged. <laughs> and here's this world famous Yankee, but he was a purple star, two purple stars, and a Marine, a tough Marine. Tough guy, he was tough, but he never went out looking for trouble. And uh, he really got himself in a lot of trouble. Well, uh, they had to go to Boston the next day. And uh, so he was released, of course, uh, as being a famous Yankee ball player, they, they released him, they didn't hold him. And the next day he was on the train from New York City to Boston. And uh, he was kind of sitting there thinking about everything, kind of feeling bad. And he thought, well, I'm going to get up and go back to the bar, bar and have me a drink. So he was walking back down the train towards the uh, bar. Young gentleman said, Hank Bauer? And he says, yes. And uh, this gentleman stood up and said, I'm Senator John F. Kennedy. Would you sit down and, and talk to me? And he said, well, sure, I will. And he said, well, I don't want you to worry about this deal at Tacopa. And Hank said, well, Senator, you can tell me that, but I'm in really big trouble. <laughs> and uh, he told the senator what happened. He says, I don't know who hit him. I didn't. And, uh, and the senator said, well, Hank, I want to tell you something. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. So Hank was thinking to himself, well, how, how can you, what do you mean, just don't forget about it? That's a hard thing to forget about. He said, just forget about it. I will take care of it. Everything will be okay. So he shook his hand and said, thank you, sir. And he remembered walking down the, the train thinking, what a remarkable man that is. He's a, just a really likable guy, a lot of charisma. Of course, he didn't know who John F. Kennedy was. I guess maybe he might have heard of him. So he went back and had a couple drinks. And they went and played their ball game, and played their series with Boston. And when they got back to Yankee Stadium, the uh, general manager of the boss boss came up and said, Bauer, I don't know what kind of friends you have, but the charges have been dropped. And Hank said, wow, John F. Kennedy. And uh, he says, I, I don't know either. Well, he said, you're a lucky guy. What a great baseball story. And all the many, many years after the Copacabana incident, I always kidded Hank, come on, now you can tell me. Did you, you had a right to nail the guy. Did you get him? He said, <laughs> he says, I didn't do it. I think Billy probably did it. Billy loved a good pie. So I hope you...
Really enjoyed this great story about my great friend, Hank Bauer. For looking back, this is Gary Heidrich.